If you want to be blessed by God, there are two things you should do and three things you shouldn't. Coming up next on today's Destined for Victory, Pastor Paul Shepard shares his message, Winning with the Word. But before he gets started, he joins us from his studio in California. Pastor Paul, we are airing several messages here at the beginning of the month centered on the idea of positioning ourselves for prosperity. I think we have everyone's attention now. How do you define prosperity, and what are some keys to making sure we are well positioned for it? Yeah, I'm really glad to be able to share a series about this because we must understand, we especially who live in a prosperous place like the United States and listeners in other countries that are listening to me, the reality is we're so blessed. We have so much that we can thank God for in terms of financial and material blessings. But really the true definition, biblically speaking, of prosperity is to learn the will of God, Mm -hmm. to live by it, and to let him give you the byproducts of living in the center of his will. So prosperity from a biblical standpoint is not the stuff, but it is obeying God and letting him bring into our lives everything we need. It's much like what Jesus said in Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then everything you need, God will add it to your life. I have often said to the Lord, God, I would thank you for every financial, every material blessing you want to give me that I haven't yet received. But meanwhile, I'm going to live in constant gratitude as a result of the things you've already given me to do Because in doing your will, I position myself to experience your best in my life. And I hope this series will be a blessing to everyone who hears it. Yes, it's been great so far, Pastor. Again, the series is called Positioning Yourself for Prosperity, and it continues in just a few moments. Well, during this month of May, we'll once again be honoring our mothers, and we've got a great new resource to share with you today, a study guide from InterVarsity Press called Motherhood, Being Grounded in Christ. Being a mom can be complicated. It brings joy and love, but it can also come with its fair share of frustration. In this 10-lesson study on biblical motherhood, student minister and mother Patty Pell helps you discover the truth about who you are, who God is, and how He sees you. As you learn to rest in your identity in Christ, you'll be able to love your children the way God does and help them understand their own identity as children of God. That's motherhood being grounded in Christ. And it's our thank you to you or perhaps that mom in your life. Request it when you make your generous donation to Destined for Victory. Call us at 855-339-5500 or visit pastorpaul.net to make a safe and secure donation online. You can also mail your gift to Destined for Victory, Post Office Box 1767, Fremont, California, 94538. You need to learn to enjoy conversing with God and not just talking to him, that's prayer, but listening to him. A lot of us want to do all the talking and make it a one-way conversation, but you're blessed when you learn how to listen to what God has to say to your life. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. That's Psalm 1, verse 2, and this is destined for victory. Well, prayer and meditation are gifts of God, and they're designed to be a dialogue, not a monologue. Today, Pastor Paul goes to Psalm chapter 1 to show you how to live the blessed life God wants to give you. Now, with today's Destined for Victory message, Winning with the Word, here's Pastor Paul. Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Here the psalmist David declares blessed, that word means happy or to be congratulated, is the person who refuses to do the three things he mentions in verse one, who refuses to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I talked about the fact that you're blessed when you learn to listen to godly wisdom. 
And then he says, blessed is a person who refuses to stand in the path of sinners. And I told you in the last message how important it is to stay in your lane. Don't get pulled into the lane or the path of people who disobey and ignore the will of God. And then he said, blessed is a person who refuses to sit in the seat of the scornful. Don't be like so many people who are relentlessly cynical, relentlessly negative as they deal with God and his will and his word for our lives. Now, what I want to do is pick it up and show you that not only are you blessed when you refuse to do those things, but you're blessed when you choose to do what he says here in verse two. You're blessed when you choose to delight in and meditate on God's word. Look at verse two. His delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law, he meditates day and night. Let me unpack that verse for you. David refers to himself delighting in the law of God. Now, when David speaks of the law of God in the uh, Psalms, he is not talking merely about the law God gave to Moses. He's not talking merely about the Ten Commandments and all of the statutes mentioned in the first five books in your Bible. The first five books of the Bible uh, are called the books of Moses. He was the author of them. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And in the course of those books, you will find God laying down his will for the Old Testament people. And you will see that there's lots of law. But when David talks about delighting in law, he's not focusing just on the five books of Moses. He says, everything God has to say to us, I delight in hearing from God, hearing what he wants, having God give me direction, having God give me instruction. I delight delight in God's will for my life. His will is always wrapped up in his word. And I want to help you see that we must have an appreciation for the word of God, not just the word that is written in our Bible. We have 66 books that are inspired of God to help direct our path and give us his will for our lives. But everything God says, not only in his word, but by his spirit, the Holy Spirit reveals to you the will in the word of God. And you're blessed if you learn to delight in that. You need to learn to enjoy conversing with God and not just talking to him, that's prayer, but listening to him. A lot of us want to do all the talking and make it a one-way conversation, but you're blessed when you learn how to listen to what God has to say to your life. See, the Bible tells us to love God. In fact, it commands us to love God, and you've got to indulge that relationship. You've got to nourish it by making sure you are conversant with God on a regular basis. Now, let me help you understand something. Y'all remember, just think back when you were a little young boy, young girl. You remember your first little crush, first little girlfriend, boyfriend. You wanted to talk. You wanted to talk even when y'all didn't have anything worth talking about. Come on, come on. Let's go on back to yesteryear. Especially you old heads, I need y'all to help me because I want to establish the fact that when we were young, we people who are now older, when we were young, we didn't even have the cell phone. Now y'all can text each other and all that stuff. Wonderful. Knock yourself out with your little crush. When back in my day, there was only one landline in the house. Come on, I need some help up in here. One landline in the house. They might have had two extensions depending on how large your house was. There might have been a couple of phones, but it was only one line. And what that meant is whoever's on the phone, nobody else is talking till they get off the phone. How many of you old heads remember the days when you got on the phone with your little friend and you were talking? Y'all weren't saying anything. Come on, think about it. Sometime in late at night, Friday night, when your parents let you stay up late, it's during the school year, you can stay up Friday night or Saturday night, and you on the phone with your little friend, and you really think back, y'all weren't talking about much at all, especially at night, sometimes you're getting real sleepy, but you're still holding the phone, I need some help up in here, still holding the phone, and it goes silent for a little while, and then after a while, somebody say, you sleep? <laughs> they say, uh-uh. I mean, I'm sleepy, but I ain't sleep. (laughs) Holding the phone. You didn't have much to say. It was puppy love, but it's real to the puppies. (laughs) 
Why? Because you wanted to talk. And as you grew up, after you learned how to rap, had your little Mac brothers and your sisters, then you really wanted to talk. Some of y'all, I'm not going to make you wave your hand in witness, but some of y'all remember times when you stayed on the phone all night. Y'all both fell asleep with the phone in your hand. Come on. Oh, you pretending like you never did it. All right. Why? You just wanted to converse. And listen, if you want to be a blessed person, David said, learn to enjoy conversing with God, not just talking to him, but letting him talk to you about his will for your life. Because his will is not oppressive. His will is to bless you. God's not trying to hold you back. God's trying to get blessings into your life. And blessed is the person who chooses to delight in and meditate on God's word. Here's the way I want you to put it in your notes. When you're positioning yourself for prosperity, you joyfully take in and live out God's word. When you are positioning yourself for prosperity, you joyfully take in and live out God's word. When God wants to talk, you want to hear it. And you're an eager listener. You're eager to take it in so that you can live it out. Now, let me help you understand. This is going to be something that you have to do as an act of your will. Before the delight of it comes, sometimes the discipline of it starts. And here's why it's important to know that prior to the delight is the discipline because anything worth doing, even if it's not automatically fulfilling, automatically comfortable, you have to push through and discipline until it becomes comfortable because you're going to see the delight in conversing with God. Some of you who have joined uh, gyms or taken up fitness, you remember the time when you first started in there? It wasn't fun. You just said, I need to get myself in shape. And you went in there huffing and puffing and believing God. But if you stood your ground, after a while, I've met folk who that's what they live to do, work out. And you look at them and say, really? Like you get up eager to do this? They do. They push through. They have a delight. But it probably started with discipline. Well, you need to do that when it comes to listening to God, taking in his word so you can live it out. If you say, well, I can't relate to David. I don't delight in it. Well, you haven't pushed through to that place. You got to start with making the decision. I'm going to listen to God. I'm going to read his word regularly. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit speak to me regularly so that I can live it out. It's got to be disciplined also because you have a spiritual enemy, Satan, and he hates the fact that you want to converse with God. Up next, the second half of today's Destined for Victory message with Pastor Paul Shepard, Senior Pastor at Destiny Christian Fellowship in Fremont, California. You can listen to the broadcast on demand at pastorpaul.net. That's pastorpaul.net. And there you'll also find a brand new design and lots of great resources at our website. Now, with the rest of today's Destined for Victory message, Winning with the Word, once again, here is Pastor Paul. You need to understand, spiritual warfare is very real. He's been working hard to let you know any lie he wants to sell you. And he's been doing it from the beginning. And here's what he loves to do for people who hear from God. Then he loves to take what God says in his word and by his spirit. He'll take God's statements and turn them into questions. He'll take God's truth and cause you to question it. And he's been doing it since the beginning. If you go to Genesis chapter 3, you will find he started that mess way back there. Look at Genesis 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And so Satan entered a particular serpent. Satan is a spirit being, a disembodied being that is opposed to the will of God at every point. And so he invaded the life of a serpent in order to communicate with an individual. And he said to the woman, serpents don't talk, but devils do. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Look at that. He's asking a question to Eve 
beginning to get her programmed to question God's statements. Has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Look at verse 2. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. So Satan poses a question. Has God really said that, that you can't eat? And she correctly said, no, what he said is we can eat of the trees of the garden, but this one tree in the midst of the garden, we are not to eat from it. In fact, we're not even to touch it. So she's got it right. Look at what Satan does. Even when you know God's will, he said to her, you need to get this straight. You shall not surely die. God said, the day you do it, you will die. Satan said, you're not going to die. One statement is true. One is a lie. God's word is always true. Any contradictory word, whether it comes directly from Satan or he's just planted enough doubt in your heart, in your mind, anything that contradicts the will of God is a lie. I need to help you. You can't second guess God and be the blessed person David is talking about. I need to tell you that because we live in a world where people want to do their thing and they still want to be blessed. We have people who disobey regularly and they still want to be blessed. In fact, they're trying to claim it, trying to name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. The way they say it a lot now, I decree and declare. You ever heard that? Where they get that from? I decree and declare. But we have all these little things that we try to say. But the fact of the matter is, I don't care what you decree and declare, what you blab and grab, what you name and claim. If you're not doing what God said, you're positioning yourself out of the place where he can bless you. And so look at her. She gives him a correct response. No, he said we can eat of the trees, but leave this tree alone. And he comes back and says, you won't surely die. Then look at verse five. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Said, no, the truth is when you eat of it, You're going to have your eyes opened and you're going to move up to God's level. And you'll be at a place where you not only know good and evil, you will be at the place where you are sovereign. You can decide for yourself what you want to do and what you don't want to do. You'll be on par with God. So no matter what he says he wants you to do, you can just say, I'm going to do something else and still be blessed. That's what he's trying to set her up to believe. And he tries to set you up to believe it too. I don't have to do what God says. You don't have to be a fanatic. You can just go to church when you feel like it. Stay home when you feel like it. You can do the will of God when you want to and ignore it when you want to. And God will bless you anyway. So he has planted the seed first with the lie. You won't die. And then with the lie, you're going to move up to God's level. And look at what happens. Verse six. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, you got to watch it. She saw the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes. Some of y'all are messed up over what you're seeing. I hope you didn't think this message was going to be about Adam and Eve. I'm not preaching to Adam and Eve. I'm preaching to you about you. So you see some things that are good and pleasant to the eye and you're focused on what you see rather than what you heard God say. And you're being set up. When she saw that and the tree was desirable, look at the next phrase, to make one wise. She saw that it was desirable to make one wise. How'd you see that a tree is desirable? No, no. That's when you have started taking in the lie. And now the lie starts feeding you false information. 
You can't just buy one a lie. You got to buy the accompanying lies. And so now she says, you know what? He said that I would become wise. I'd become like God. And when I look at that tree, that makes a whole lot of sense. And I'll become just like God. And I, I don't have to, I don't have to bow to him because Satan told me that I will go up to God's level and God must be trying to hold me back. God doesn't have my best interest. He's trying to hold me back. I want to be every woman. <laughs> Y'all remember Chaka Khan. Don't even try it. Don't even try it. And even the young folk who don't remember her, you remember when Whitney picked it up years ago. I'm every woman. It's all in me. Anything you want, don't start. No. And so when she's thinking these things, oh yeah, he's trying to hold me back. I'm going to be so much better, a better version of myself if I just do this. And the next thing you know, you're thinking that going against God's will is a good idea. And we've all been there. Don't pretend like you have never second guessed anything God has said. And that's what happened in the beginning. And I want you to see the saddest verse in the Bible. It goes on to say she saw it was desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. Next sentence. Worst sentence in the Bible. (laughs) She also gave to her weak, pitiful, ought to be shame of himself, husband who was standing right there with her and he ate. That is pitiful. Of all the times that the macho ought to come out, that's when his macho should have been there. He should have been the man, because he's the one, when you look at the previous chapter, he's the one God spoke these words to. Eve was about to be created, but first he spoke his word to Adam. Then he created Eve and he shared with Eve what God had said. That's how she knew it. So he heard God first and he's standing there with his weak self while she holds a conversation with the devil. Pitiful. Spiritually passive men are pitiful. You going to let the devil run up on your wife and do what he wants to do and you standing there and doing nothing? Poor excuse for a man. But men have been doing it ever since. Sitting in the chair. Ding dong, honey get the door. <laughs> Open the door it's the devil with a package. You say, who that, devil? (laughs) And you stay in the chair watching Sports Center. That was the time for his macho to step up. There it is right there. We always try to get macho, but y'all got to find the right time to get macho. When the devil's coming against your family, that's the time for you to step up. That's the time for you to say, hey, 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 wait a minute. Let me, let me have this conversation. You stand behind me, baby. Just keep looking fine. Because you know Eve, this is it. Eve was it. And that girl was cute for real. And he should have said, you just stand back here with your fine self. Uh, What is it? How can I help you? That's what he should have done. Thanks so much for being here for today's Destined for Victory message, Winning with the Word. Remember, for your generous gift to Destined for Victory, be sure to request the study guide from InterVarsity Press, Motherhood, Being Grounded in Christ. That's Motherhood, Being Grounded in Christ. Visit PastorPaul.net for details. Man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by feelings alone. Man shall not live by what he thinks alone. We must live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Live your life by the word of God to be blessed. And that's tomorrow in Pastor Paul Shepard's message, Winning with the Word. Until then, remember, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. In Christ, you are destined for victory.